Excellent. Thanks for being here. Am I, oh, I'm over here. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, let's okay. Talk so obviously, um, we get to see a lot of him, but we we don't really get to see a lot of like character development or background. So my first question to you is, if there was a spin-off, specifically a prequel, uh -huh. what do you think we'd see from Bloodaxe? Well, you may not know, but there actually is a prequel comic that's going to accompany the release of this film. I believe a couple weeks after this comes out on Netflix, which will, uh, I think is the twenty first and twenty second of uh, this month. They'll have a, a comic called The House, House of the Blood Axe, and you get to explore the backstories of Darian and Devra and how they started the Blood Axe Revolution. Mm. And speaking of that sibling relationship, was there any like personal experience you drew upon to portray that role? Uh, well, I've got a lot of brothers and sisters, so you know we don't always see eye to eye on things. We always, I'm sure anyone who has brothers and sisters know that, uh, or siblings, I should say, uh, know that. Uh, uh, there are definitely different ways to handle and tackle problems, and I think we get a great juxtaposition of uh, both Darian and Devra's points of view on how to deal with uh, deal with this conflict. And what was your most memorable moment um, from set? Uh, the most memorable moment from set uh, usually are the moments where we're all together. The first time we all come together on set, we're all in our costumes, uh, and we go, okay, you know, the gang's all here. Good guys, the bad guys, and everyone in between. Yeah. Speaking of good guys and bad guys, obviously your character, I would say, is more on the good side. Um, do you um, prefer playing more like bad or good guy type of roles? I, I think they're all great. I think at the end of the day, the bad and the good is really determined by the audiences, right? We have good characters that make bad choices. We have, you know, characters that are bad that, you know, may ultimately make good choices. And that's the great thing about Zach's work is you never know what to expect from who, right? And so it keeps you on the edge of your seat in that way. What's it like working with Zach again? Phenomenal. Uh, it feels like it feels like a homecoming in a way. Uh, to be, it's an honor to be a part of this IP, and it's uh, it's great to know that uh, he's able to do exactly what he wants to do with this, and that he has the 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 breadth of creativity that Netflix is allowing him to to display. I mean, you're no stranger to stunt work, and you've got a few awesome pieces. I mean, I I've got a favorite in my head, but okay. is there a favorite of yours that you've done on Bevel Me? Uh, anything that involved the ramps and the jumping and, and that sort of stuff, yeah. That stuff was really cool. And anything stunt or fight related in general. We had a great stunt crew uh, that helped to choreograph and really plan these things out. And anything you see up there that you would, be, would, that you would attribute to us as being really great, we also got to give credit to them. Who's the biggest rebel on set? <laughs> uh, we're all rebels in our own ways, and that's the thing. You know, we all have different rebellious tactics. I think the most like overt rebel you'd probably hear people say, "Well, Sophia or maybe Staz." Uh, uh, but you know, there are many ways to lead a rebellion. Yeah. Thank you so much, Uncle Gats. Appreciate it. Thank no you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.